Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Pastor Rick Uthi from Maranatha Community Fellowship in Plain City, Ohio. You know, when we had this cold snap, um, we were really cold here in Ohio, but it moved all the way down to Florida, and I was reading an article where it showed an iguana laying beside this pool. Uh, it looked like it was dead, uh, but I don't, I don't think it actually was. What was happening was it was so cold in Miami that iguanas are cold-blooded creatures, and so when it gets that cold, their blood kind of gels it doesn't flow and there were iguanas actually falling out of trees you know beside people's pools and wherever else um, they are and so it looks like they're just dead um, but actually if they warm up um, on the inside if the sun comes out they'll actually most of them will come back and to life and they'll be energetic and moving around and everything will be okay and they were warning people, you know, you shouldn't really go out and try and pick them up because if they're just on the border, they're not really dead, so be careful. As a matter of fact, when this happened back in 2010, it was actually a little colder. And one guy had had a bunch of them in his yard, so he just picked them up and put them in his car and was going to take them somewhere to get rid of them. Of course, on the drive, they warmed up and started moving around and crawling around on him, and he almost wrecked, right? So anyway, you got to kind of be careful with those kind of things. And, and actually, I came down with the flu bug this past week and felt like that iguana. I mean, I was cold and shivering and under blankets and didn't want to move. And I got to thinking, you know, that's the way it is in physical life. What about our spiritual life? What causes this same kind of spiritual, um, just lethargy? What, what causes us to be so slow in our spiritual lives? And the Bible warns about a couple things. And one of the things is that we consider a blessing oftentimes is our material things. Uh, the Bible warns over and over and over again that those things can become a hindrance to us, that those things can actually cause our spiritual lives to, to go dormant. And it's a big warning. Uh, in Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out. So, we, you know, uh, Paul's just warning people, you know, you're not going to take anything with you from this world um, when it comes when when your time to go. If you have food or clothing, be content with those things. And he says, those who want to be rich fall into a temptation, a trap, and many foolish and harmful desires, who plunge people into ruin and destruction. And that word plunge, I had to think of the iguanas. They're falling. They're plunging into destruction. Um, it says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It doesn't say money is. I mean, the Bible is clear that if we have money, it, it tells us actually in the same chapter that we should be generous, good works, willing to share, that we should use those things for God's kingdom so they can be used for good things. But the problem is that love of money is, is such a weight. It creates such an inertia to hold us still um, for just for and we spend it all on ourselves we don't want to spend it on God we don't want to do things for him and that that's what the Bible warns again it goes on and says flee these things pursue righteousness godliness faith love endurance gentleness fight the good fight of faith take hold of eternal life to which you were called and so instead of being lethargic instead of being you know, having this inertia and weight just weigh us down because we're concerned with the cares of this world, and they will disappoint. They are false hopes that God knows will disappoint us in the end because they aren't a certainty. There is no guarantee. When we put our trust in those things, it, it causes us to miss out on the life that Jesus wants us to take hold of. And, and so here's the bottom line. To take hold of that life, we need to know Jesus. We need to be in his word. We need to pursue Jesus Christ. We need to pursue his righteousness. We need to pursue those things that God tells us to pursue. And when we do those, when we have Jesus at the center, and when we pursue him, it warms us up inside. It gets us out of this lethargic, spiritual, do nothing because I like my comfort and ease. 
It gets us out of that mode. It allows us to take hold of true life. It allows us to fight the good fight of faith and take hold of eternal life, which is true. And so that's where life is. So I would encourage all of us as we go through, especially here in North America with the many riches we have, let's put Jesus first and let's pursue him so that he warms us up so that we can fight that good fight. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on The Bottom Line.